back to the music because I know you tease and you're like a lot of your music this year is going to be based off your experiences like you just want to so, so, yeah. share because sharing is caring <laughs> it's it's true I feel like one of the things I had missed out on I, I have been doing music for so long I I started performing doing live performances in 2010 and I have been writing music since I was 11 years old I have a bunch of music and one of my biggest dreams in life was to share, to share my music. And I feel like my, a big purpose of mine in this life that I feel like I'm constantly being reminded by the universe is to give people hope, give people right. something to hope for. And I felt like going through that whole experience, I just wanted to give people hope, like to just never give up. And I feel like this is that opportunity. I'm finally in the space where I can be like, guys, I have overcome this and you can do it too. And I'm also a very a perfectionist. I'm a perfectionist when it comes to music, especially. Yes. Um, a lot of people don't know, but I'm a classically trained pianist. Oh, really? I've been playing You've piano trained? since I was nine years old. Oh, wow. And I recently went back to school and... Just going back to school also, because I started going back to school, I went back to school last year to, for piano. And just going back to playing the piano again just opened my mind and my heart again to make me, like I felt alive and I felt that connection with music that I had before. And I feel like I, now I'm in that place where I just want to be vulnerable again. I feel like I had locked myself out. And I'm not that type of person. I'm a really vulnerable person. I will tell you what's in my heart, what's in my mind, without feeling shame. I mean, and I think a lot of people don't really quite know the burden that depression puts on a person unless they've been through it, personally. Yeah, that's a, yeah true. So for you, can, can you pinpoint a particular thing that maybe you say, this led to me being feeling this way about myself? I think, because um, I've, I've been depressed before, once before, but like for the postpartum depression, obviously it was because the baby and like, there was so much drama going on around me and revolving around me and the child. And I think I wasn't ready for that. It also came at a time when I was new to the public eye. Yeah. Like, obviously, You're I had just, done, Actually, like, that's when your career was now really... So my career was, like, people were interested in me now. Yes. And it came at... Like, that was just the worst time. Because if I had gotten used to sort of that attention... You didn't know how to handle I it. I would have been able to handle it, mm. I, I guess, a bit better. But I was not used to that attention. And then the attention quickly went from positive attention to negative attention. And I was like, oh, God, what am I going to do? And I'm a really sensitive person. So I took it personally. That's yeah. the... I think the biggest mistake I made was... You thought you were the problem. ...was I took it personally, right. yeah. And I didn't realize... Like, right now, I can read comments, some comments on Twitter or like Facebook or Instagram and be like, this is just a troll. Like this person is just But that doesn't make it right. You guys need to know some of those comments hurt. Trolling, trolling is Yes, is, you need to be nice sick. on those streets. Trolling is sick. But, it really is. But like now I've learned how to recognize that, oh, this is just a troll. This is not, it, it does not, it's not a reflection of who I am. It's a reflection of who this person is. Absolutely. Now you mentioned that you were going through some drama with the baby's father. Have you guys sorted that on that front? Yeah. Like are you co-parenting together? We are okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're past all that because, and I think the difference think between you and perhaps a lot of women, you had to go through, through it on a very public stage. Stage. I think like the biggest thing for me in that whole struggle was not even like resolving those issues. It was just resolving, sort of standing firm in who I am and knowing True. who I am and what I want from this life. Because sometimes people don't have the, that privilege of fixing things. Not everyone has that privilege to fix things or to make things work after something like that. But for me, the most important thing, and I feel like the most important thing for anyone who is going through any type of that sort of drama is just to find out what, like to, to heal yourself first. Because it's very Absolutely. hard for you. Because babies, like children need a stable parent. Babies so are demanding. You, 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 you have to be stable. <laughs> yes. And the only way you're going to be stable is to make sure you're stable. Like, you, you're, you're going to have to be stable to make sure that the baby has a stable environment to grow Absolutely. up Absolutely. So any collabs that we can look forward to this year? Um, I guess, yeah. I've done a bunch of collabs with Blinky Bill, who is, like, the most phenomenal person I have worked with to date. Um, so we released... 
a song last year. We, he released one in 2016 of his EP. Was it 2016 or 2017? Of his EP, and it was called Rise. And then later last year, he released one where it was me, him, and Orarunga, the trumpet, the brass player. And we have done other collabs, which I think are going to be on his album that he's releasing this year, which I'm excited about. So I think that's, those are the collabs I'm excited about, mainly the Blinky Bill collabs. Then, but I have been working. I'm, I'm, I'm still going to studio and working with other people. It's going to be an exciting year for collabs for me. Absolutely. Now